It's long been known that certain groups of elements can have very similar chemical properties, meaning that those elements react in a similar way under a given set of conditions when mixed with other compounds. So for instance, sodium metal reacts with elemental chlorine gas to produce the white sodium chloride salt. In a similar way, the metals lithium and potassium also react with chlorine gas to produce white salts, lithium chloride and potassium chloride. Now the grouping of elements based on their chemical properties began at least as early as 1862 with a French geology professor named Deschan Gautois. But the credit for the modern periodic table, as you've seen it in your chemistry books, is generally given to the Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev, who in 1869 published a periodic table of elements that arrange elements based on their atomic weights. Arranging the elements based on atomic weights proves to have some problems. And so more recently, in 1914, uh, based on the work of Henry Moseley, an English physicist, the elements were arranged in the current periodic table based on their atomic number. So in the modern periodic table, the groups of elements are arranged according to their chemical properties, electron configurations, and their atomic numbers. So for instance, hydrogen, which has one proton, atomic number of one, starts out the periodic table. Next comes helium with atomic number of two. Then we step down to lithium with three protons, so atomic number of three, and so forth. You may remember from earlier in this movie, lithium, sodium, and potassium all reacted in a similar way with chlorine gas to produce white salts. And they have many other chemical properties uh, that are similar, and so they end up in the same column or uh, group on the periodic table. We would predict then also that rubidium and cesium would react in a similar fashion with uh, chlorine, as did potassium, sodium, and lithium. So groups of uh, or families of elements appear in the columns of the periodic table. Now they're numbered 1 through 18, but many of them are also given names, and you should be familiar with some of the names of these groups in the periodic table. So for instance, Group 1, which is the lithium family of elements, are called the alkali metals. And then Group 2 are the alkaline earth metals. 16 oxygens family are called chalcogens. Fluorine family are called the halogens. And then, of course, we have the noble gases, uh, helium through uh, radon. And you may already know that these are all monatomic gases, so similar uh, physical properties and also uh, fairly non-reactive. So it makes sense they would be in the same family or group in the periodic table. The rows in the periodic table are called periods and they're uh, arranged of course one, two, three, four on down. So we have hydrogen and helium which are period one, lithium through neon period two, sodium through argon period three and so forth. And there are regular sort of periodic properties, regular changes in the properties of elements that occur as you proceed from left to right across the periodic table. Uh, one interesting one that's easy to remember is that um, you know as you go up and then from left to right across a periodic table, the elements, elements become less metallic. So that ends up with the uh, elements in the periodic arranged so that the metals are primary, primarily on the left of the periodic table, now shown in gray, and then the nonmetals, shown in the greens and blues, end up on the right side of the periodic table. In between these two sections, in between the metals and the nonmetals, as you transition between the two, you have the semimetals or metalloids, and you may be familiar with these because they're very commonly used in semiconducting materials. In terms of the overall um, properties of the periodic table, uh, we can use this table to arrange them according to certain things like melting point, boiling point, and so forth. 
for now, we'll just look at the general states of the different elements. And you can see from this uh, arrangement that, of course, the side with the metals tend to be solids, except for mercury, which is a liquid. The only other element that is a, normally a liquid in its natural state is bromine. And then, of course, on the right-hand side, many of the non-metals are gases. So, for instance, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, and so forth are all gases. So you should be familiar with the arrangement of the elements in the periodic table, the nomenclature that we've talked about with respect to the rows and the columns, and based on the chemical property of a given element, you should be able to predict what other elements in the periodic table would have similar chemical properties. And we'll um, practice with this uh, in class coming up.